why I personally like jazz is because uh, I think I find the best uh, way to express myself there. It can capture feelings if you're happy, if you're sad, if you're thoughtful. What I love about jazz is its freedom. It's, it speaks to me on, on more levels than just sort of the, the act of singing. It's talking to me in my mind. Um, so why jazz? Why not? Jazz is, is, is one of the older <coughs> universal African cultures. But I think the time has come for us to actually have indigenous productions. <laughs> The Safaricom uh, story around jazz is a very interesting story uh, because it's a story that was born out of an idea that was formed in our CEO's uh, mind when he had gone for a visit in Europe and he got the opportunity to be able to see a youth orchestra performing. So he came back to us and challenged us as a marketing team and asked why can't we form a youth orchestra? but not just a youth orchestra for the sake of um, showcasing the talent that is there, but a youth orchestra that does good, uh, which is really very much in line with our vision as a company, the whole vision of transforming lives. And um, we then said uh, we could probably set up a youth orchestra that would maybe have a composition of about uh, 60 to 70 percent of underprivileged kids who have good talent, but they probably don't get an opportunity to be able to develop that talent. Um, and then uh, the other 30% made up of uh, your average uh, everyday kids. So out of that, the Safari Youth Orchestra was born. You know, it started out by just wanting to have jazz. <laughs> but then at Safari we said we want to transform lives. And so that grew into how do we bring international artists in, how do we lift the overall standards up. But the most important thing recently is that we have started to sponsor the Ghetto Classics. Because, and you know, we use this phrase, music that moves. When I got the phone call telling us that um, we would be the official charity for the Jazz Festival, yes, it was an extremely exciting uh, piece of news to receive. We were a small, struggling project here in Korogosho, definitely short of resources in terms of instruments, in terms of um, the accessories, in terms of money to actually be able to run the project. We started off with the 400 kids only focused in Nairobi. Now we are um, directly impacting about 1,200 kids who have gone through the program. We have expanded from Nairobi, gone to Mombasa. Next year we are further expanding this to go to Kisumu. So now we are beginning to not only just have uh, local impact here, we are now beginning to spread that impact across the rest of the country. The kids are so driven and so motivated to be part of this project and you can see that it extends to other parts of their lives. If you go to the schools, you'll find that that top tier of children belongs to Ghetto Classics. Uh, being in Ghetto Classics has really helped me a lot in learning my instrument and other life skills. Apart from studying, I found something that I can do which is fun. The Jazz Festival has definitely raised our profile, not just here in Kenya, but internationally. Um, we get many visitors, and a lot of them are, you know, really fancy Grammy Award winning visitors. And I mean, I can think of Jeff Nev, you know, they've managed to get a hundred instruments for us. We have Kirk Whalem, um, who is uh, writing some music for us. Bradford Marsalis, who has sent us reeds for our saxophones and our clarinets. Maya, she plays the cello and so she's a great friend of our cello players here and every so often they just have a chat on Skype. You know, those are life-changing um, situations because otherwise these kids would not have had much of a future. But music is giving them dignity and it's giving them hope. I think Safaricom has a long history of being involved in music. Uh, they've had a lot of um, music properties. I mean, there's Nikona Safaricom Live, there's been a Groove, so jazz I think is a natural fit. Uh, and it's been well received. One of the objectives
objectives of the jazz festival is to sort of bring local jazz music to the fore. Uh, and what has happened is that we've committed that every jazz event we have, we must have a Kenyan jazz performer because there is a vibrant jazz scene and Kenya just hasn't had a platform and that's what the festival does. For us as jazz musicians, we are so grateful that there's an opportunity for us to, to have a stage like, like this. My Safaricom jazz experience was amazing. Putting us on that platform like defined us as a jazz band. I think it's opened a lot of opportunities for us. Uh, when we opened for Hugh Masekela, that was what, uh, 8,000, 5,000 people, I guess. So it was a very good platform for us. Even locally, people get go to know about us, like hear about us overnight. When you're put in front of 7,000 people, one of, the, one of the biggest things that you actually come out there with is confidence that you can do it. I got to meet people that I've looked up to for a long time. Kirk Whalem, Gerald Albright. There's a lot of people now who are coming and they know that we exist. And of course now other companies uh, that are able to give us work uh, started noticing. I'm a living testament that that has transformed life. It's transformed my life as a musician to see um, sort of the possibilities available for, for, for music and not just music but for jazz music. And it, I think it's helping us as Kenyan jazz musicians to find our Kenyan voice because one of the things that the festival is yearning to do is to put our music on an international stage. I sometimes go to a trade fair and they say, oh, you have jazz musicians in Kenya. And I'm like, yes, and very, very good jazz musicians. I'm getting more opportunities to do different things. I get asked to go to trade fairs to, to see to push the jazz festival. I get to MC different gigs just because of the opportunity that I've gotten to be on, on, the, on the jazz stage. So firstly, a big thank you to our partners who really from day one believed in the vision of what we were doing, which was bringing the jazz culture to Kenya, but more than that, making a difference to the lives of the children of ghetto classics. So we've had like the Italian Institute, we've had the Embassy of Belgium, the Embassy of Israel, the British Council, KLM, um, the Intercon, Color Print, Most Sound, Apollo Tours, and so it's way beyond our dreams. We didn't think that in five years' time we would be a jazz festival uh, that has now become, from an audience perspective, as big as it has. But even from a global perspective, we are starting to see uh, people recognizing it as a jazz festival that they want to perform at. Every jazz lounge we've done now going forward, we've been sold out because people believe in the brand, the brand has grown. We're seeing as many as 10,000 people coming out to a jazz event. And people think jazz is cool. It's cool to, to be a jazz musician. It's cool to go to a jazz festival. We've moved to where we are doing four major events a year. We have two lounges, one in August and one in November. We have um, the big festival in February. And now we even have a, a, a gig on the International Jazz Day. I think jazz transcends the age if you get to listen to it. But I think once people start experiencing, they realize that it's just as fun and interesting to anybody who likes hip-hop, R&B, it's all about the beats. It's very cool, it's nice, the music is very cool, it's just moving. The way they say jazz is music that moves you. Actually this one I'm seeing so many Belgian perf Belgians performing and that means we're having a cultural interaction and actually the real experience of what we see on our televisions. And this is such a lovely way to spend a Sunday on a three-day weekend. It's outside, the weather's gorgeous with good friends. It's amazing. Yeah, the music's been brilliant. All the artists. We've had a great time.